What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video where I'll be talking about transfers and players. Well, transfers and the performance of a certain Chelsea player. Shock spoiler, that player is Mateo Kovacic with a superior, superior, a superb, imperious. I kind of wanted to say both of those words. A superbious performance against Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League at Stamford Bridge. Oh my days, this man is superb. He's kind of stepping up and I think he's going to sort of fill that void as the ball carrier, ball progressor, tackler that, well, when N'Golo Kante isn't in the team, he's just looking amazing. He's arguably been Chelsea's player of the season. Wonderful scenes. I want to talk about transfers as well. Emerson Palmieri looking like he'll probably be surplus to requirements in the summer. Maybe Alonso stays. The goalkeeper situation. And the striker situation. So yes, no Jadon Sancho chat today. That's going to be put on ice for a while. So it's pretty interesting stuff here. But before we open up the can of good gear and tuck in, I want to quickly remind you about my sponsor. Yes, indeedy. If you want information, stats, news, updates, media, and all that luck, you should go and check out One Football. It's clear, it's concise, it's simple to use, and most importantly, it is informative. Everything you need consolidated into one place, into a platform that gives you whether it's Chelsea or just football, all the juice you want, it's there. So make sure you do go check out One Football. The link is in the top of the description. Simply click it. All right, let's get on with it. So before we do get into the transfer stories of today's video, let's basically tip our caps to Mateo Kovacic, man. Now, he was probably really underrated last season playing under Maurizio Sarri. Um, he had a certain specific role to play in Sarri's football and perhaps he didn't get to express himself as much. He expresses himself a lot in this Frank Lampard team, but also he shows superb discipline and functionality in that midfield. He had another superb performance yesterday against Tottenham Hotspur and Squawker tweeted out his stats and they are as follows. 100% take-ons completed, 95 5% passing accuracy in a London derby, that is just immaculate. 90 touches, 77 total passes, 42 passes in the opposition half, that's very good. 15 ball recoveries, yes please, doing in that defensive graft. 11 duels contested, 5 take-ons, well, we all know he's a dribbler and ball carrier. 2 chances created and 2 interceptions. A, like I said, imperious performance in the midfield, superb defensively, offensively, while Chelsea cannot rely on N'Golo Kante due to injury coming in and out of the team. Someone like Mateo Kovacic can do something similar. Very, very good ball progression as well. He's absolutely superb for Chelsea. He has to be the sort of number one name on the team sheet moving forwards, regardless of what's going on. So, you know, Kovacic is dope. Right, oh, Dries Mertens will be a free agent in the summer if all things continue as how they're going. Obviously, it, <laughs> weird things happened at Napoli this season, man. And obviously, he's sort of got Napoli in his heart and all that jazz. I do think he'll be moving in the summer now. Inter Milan really, really want him. It's another old player <laughs> that Conte wants to sweep up. But Chelsea remain interested. Remember, there'll be no transfer fee here. Perhaps they could offer him a little bit of a longer contract due to the lack of a transfer fee. Because remember, he's 32 years old. <laughs> he's only like a, like a year younger than Olivier Giroud. But he's very, very different to Giroud. Obviously, Olivier Giroud, how many times could I say Giroud in the space of a few seconds, had a wonderful performance against Tottenham and showed he's still very useful to this Chelsea side, but we know his dynamic, his player profile, and Drew's Mertens is a lot different. He's a much, much smaller. Um, he's more of a sort of cloak and dagger, nimbly kind of player, can play on the wing, all across the front, basically. And he's a goal scorer, probably more so than Olivier Giroud. I think Frank Lampard is still interested in him. And Chelsea will go into a battle with Inter Milan to sign him in a free in the summer. Obviously, Chelsea is still looking at the likes of Moussa Dembele. And who knows, they might sort of look at a new striker target come the summer transfer window. But they are still very interested in Dries Mertens to help nurture the development of young Tammy Abraham. But still have the absolute sheer quality to start in either the centre forward position or in either flank. Right, Chelsea signed Emerson Palmieri for £24 million. Probably a good deal all in all if you look at how well he's played when he was in the team. You know, really, really good conventional left back at times. Obviously won the Europa League, got to third, got to finals. He's combined very well with Loftus-Cheek and Eden Hazard on the left-hand side. But Frank Lampard doesn't fancy him and he had put in some proper poor performances. 
pretty much a lot this season except for the beginning portion. Now, again, Marcus Alonso showed his great worth in the left wing at back position when Chelsea play a free back system, and it does look like Frank Lampard will turn to that system when he needs to. Therefore, out of the two, suddenly Alonso's looking like the useful one out of him and Emerson Palmieri. Tell me that literally exactly one year ago to the day, and my head would explode, trust me, because watching Emerson play the, sorry, watching Alonso play the conventional left back system, it was infuriating. Attacks would literally break down completely, um, he'd get turned all the time. Eden Hazard, who never whinges on the pitch really, was literally slumping his shoulders when Alonso would break down and attack. No chemistry, infuriated the Chelsea fans, but things changed in time now, and now he's looking like a valuable member of the squad to play just the left wing back position. So out of him and out Emerson, Emerson looks like surplus to requirements if Chelsea are indeed going to buy a new first choice conventional left back. So it does look like a return to Italy for Emerson Palmieri, both Inter and Juventus want him. Interestingly, I think he could end up at Juventus playing for Maurizio Sarri, what he played, you know, he played so well for him last season for Chelsea, like I said, in the Europa League and finishing third in the Premier League, etc, etc. I'm not sure Chelsea will necessarily make a profit on Emerson, but they'll certainly think they can get their money back, because he was a promising player at Roma, he's won things at Chelsea. I know he's a bit older or whatever, but he's still a good age, so generally Chelsea should look to get £25 million uh, pounds plus for Emerson before they reinvest into a new left back and maybe keep Alonso. I'm speculating at the moment, but that's what I think. And obviously I want to get your thoughts and opinions in the comment section about this subject. Right, Andre Onana, the superb Ajax goalkeeper that was touted for a move to London and his preference apparently is reported to be Chelsea Football Club. Now, we've all seen it. It's not a disciplinary thing with Kepa. He has been dropped. He's no longer Chelsea's number one and it's controversial as hell, considering Willy Caballero is 38 going on 39. He's actually made a few good saves, so <laughs> deserves praise, but it's, he's really not a first choice for Chelsea Football Club in terms of quality. So it does seriously look like Chelsea will be in for a new first choice goalkeeper in the summer, which still blows my mind. I don't really have any words for it, to be honest, after that £71 million spent on Kepa. But still, if it's to be, Andro Nana is an absolutely superb candidate to take his place. Court offside has reported on this story. Barcelona are reportedly interested in signing Ajax goalkeeper Andro Nana, who's also attracted interest from Chelsea. Currently valued at €45 million, Euros, according to Transfer Marked, the Cameroonian international has done pretty well for the Eredivisie side this season. So far, Anana has kept 15 clean sheets in 34 appearances across all competitions for Ajax, who are currently six points clear at the top of the league table. Um, he's 23 years old and he makes loads and loads of saves and keeps loads of clean sheets. Seems very headstrong and a confident character. An absolute prime age to buy a decent goalkeeper. <laughs> I know we're probably saying the same thing about Kepa Aretha Balaga, but this will certainly not cost that much from Ajax. Chelsea should have a good relationship with Ajax at the moment after the ZH deal, open lines of communication. Chelsea really are to replace Kepa Aretha Balaga. For my money, Andrea Nana is the perfect candidate. And if Frank Lampard likes him as the Chelsea coach, as the one with the sort of ideas and direction of the team, then it probably should happen, maybe. Also, as well, like he, he probably, apparently, it's been reported that he never liked Kepa in terms of how he plays, maybe a bit of his attitude, and he wanted new goalkeeping uh, coaches at the beginning of the season. It's never been settled for Frank Lampard and Chelsea regarding the goalkeeper. So you've got to give the man time. If you're going to back him, you've got to give him the players he wants and you've got to give him the coaches he wants so he can build and develop something. Pretty much owe him that at this point. I think it would be a superb transfer. If Chelsea can sell Kepa and get, even just get the money to buy Onana, so say they sell Kepa for 45 million, just take a massive loss on him. It's one of those things in life like, didn't work, man. And again, I know a lot of people watch my videos and think Kepa's good and we need to give him a chance. Fine, I'm not against that. I actually am one of the people that maintain Kepa is a very talented goalkeeper. There's a reason why he became Spain's number one over David De Gea, and that's because he's, you know, he has got good reflexes and he's a good footballing goalkeeper. But it just doesn't look like it's working in terms of chemistry at Chelsea, um, his confidence, that something's going wrong. Now, he might come back into the team and he might do really, really well. I don't know. And if he does, great, because like I said, the talent's there, but he... The numbers speak for themselves, essentially, and maybe it's just maybe it's just not meant to be. Maybe someone like Andre Nana does come in. Who, let's be honest, he's being looked at. And I know 
Real Madrid and Chelsea scouted Kepa for a long time, but he played for Atletico Bilbao, and he was just an up-and-coming sort of maybe keeper. Onana's played on the biggest stage for Ajax, everyone's looking at him, he's 23 years old, I have a feeling he'd be a sound purchase. Anyway, what do you think? Get down in the comment section below, express your thoughts on the goalkeeper, and indeed everything I've spoken about this in this video, right, I just want to hear your thoughts, I'll be down there reading the comments. If you've enjoyed the content today guys, please do like the video, that means a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, follow me on social media, remember to do that, on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.